annual Perseid meteor shower lit up the sky across the country overnight, but you might not have seen it if you live in a busy area because of what's called light pollution. The mission of the International Dark Sky Association is to protect the natural sky from man-made glare. A rigorous process leads to an official designation of dark sky. And this summer, as we saw up close, the Grand Canyon became the most famous park to earn this distinction. With its red rocks and roaming Colorado River, the Grand Canyon is stunning enough by day. But seeing the park this way is only half the story. Tonight's going to be pretty fun. As we watched, astronomers gathered for a star party. High-powered telescopes set up to stare deep into outer space. Whoa. It's an event that's historic this summer. Nice. Because the Grand Canyon was just named the newest park to be certified as Dark Sky. I didn't realize that this was an issue. And John Berentine is with the International Dark Sky Association. It took two years to locate every single light, light, light in the park. In this park? In this park. Many of which the facilities people here didn't even know existed. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. I mean, you're talking about one of the most well-known national parks in the world. And now to have added something like this is a, a huge accomplishment for this park. We're very excited. As evening faded over the park, we began to see firsthand why the project was so important. Now you're really starting to get the full effect of what it's like to be out here at night. As the last clouds cleared, the full scope of a clear night sky emerged. The moon, Mars, Jupiter, beyond that brilliant star clusters and the unmistakable glow of our galaxy, the Milky Way. The fraction is on order of probably two-thirds of people in the world live in places that are too light polluted to see the Milky Way. Two-thirds of people? Two-thirds of people, give or take, have probably never seen the Milky Way. Why is it so important to protect these skies? This connects us to something in our past that we are rapidly losing touch with, and that's the sense of common humanity that we had in the era before internet and before radio and television when we sat outside under the stars at night and we told our stories. Living in or near a city, you will never see skies like this. It is both inspiring and humbling. And we can show you what it looks like on camera, but it's worth seeing in person. Wow. Awesome. You guys want to see a red star? Amateur astronomer Marina Carrera knows the feeling well. What is it about doing this, about looking up? It reminds me how small we are. The notion of preserving these skies, it's one that resonates yeah, with you. Yeah, definitely. I'm from the Phoenix area, so we have extreme light pollution there. Like, the, it's a big city, there's lights everywhere. You can't really see much out, even in the suburbs. And when you come out here and you can just look up and see the Milky Way and like these incredible dark skies, it, it's like, wow, we should really just turn off our lights more often. Getting named Dark Sky is a long process that will take a park this big more than five years in total to complete. Somebody had to go and locate every single light in the park. Yeah. Ranger Raider so Lane showed us why so many of the 5,000 lights in the park have to be replaced. These new lights are good. They only shine light where needed. But the majority of lights cast too big a glare. This is a quintessential example of a bad light. Terrible lighting right here. So. First of all, you might notice the Milky Way is gone, right? It's not above us right now. You don't, I uh, mean, you, you don't see any, you see a couple stars. One, but... two, that's probably a plane. It's, it's all gone. We're within the sky glow right now. Uh, these are uh, lights that we are going to work on uh, retrofitting and making more night sky friendly. At the star party, we learned that even the smallest amount of light can ruin your view of the night sky. At star parties, there are no white lights allowed. It's just these red ones. And that's because if you see a white light, your eyes will reset. And it takes then another 20 minutes at least to get used to the night skies again. That means no looking at your phone and certainly no camera flashes. Astronomers and tourists took in views that are timeless and for many, fast fading. John Ballantyne hopes the Grand Canyon's historic dark sky certification serves as an inspiration around the world. There's something that so intimately connects us to nature and to the universe by being out under a starry sky. And if, if I have kind of a personal mission in the work that I do for the organization, it's that every kid in America or even around the world would be able to experience that. Because for somebody who comes from a place that, that's light polluted, it's really life changing. 
Stunning, Beautiful. stunning, Jeff. Yeah. There's nothing like sitting yeah. under a, a clear night sky and just and, and taking it in. And, 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 and beyond just the beauty of it, it's, it's the energy that is saved, the money that is saved by mm -hmm. using the right kind of lighting. Mm -hmm. um, it's what it does for the environment. So many species are nocturnal. Yeah. And when there's so much light around, they don't know necessarily what to do. It's, it's, it's sort of a win-win all the way around. And as they say, you, you, you try to fight air pollution or water pollution. That takes a long time. You stop putting right. something into the water. It takes a while for it to clean up. With light pollution, you fix the light, it's fixed right away. Another reason to go to the Grand Canyon. I was there a couple weeks ago, but I never look up. I'm so busy looking at the rocks. <laughs> Beautiful stuff.